Welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to look at what we call classification of living organisms. Oh, um, I'm sure you have ever seen a disorganized house. Say people have just moved in or someone did want to clean up. It is disorganized and what we call organizing is to put things in their right places and we put them in their right places depending on what they have in common to each other. For example, I'll say, hmm, let me put clothes in the wardrobe, okay? And he said the wardrobe, I said, hmm, let me put shirts in this corner. And even the shirts, I said, let me put short sleeved shirts in this part. So I have, I'm starting to organize my house into very, very neat details, okay? So um, I, I go now to the kitchen and I say, let me put all pans in this, uh, in this part. Let me put all cutlery in this part. And even cutlery, I say, let me put all the knives here. Let me put all the forks here. We put all the spoons here, and even the forks. We put all the fish forks alone. The the all those different forks, you know, the ones for desserts. I put them hmm, in those different categories, and that is me putting my house in order. But if I were to put organisms in order, I would call that classification. Now, classification is a sub is a part of a topic which we refer to as diversity of living organisms. So, to classify is to place things into groups. Okay, so classification refers to the process of placing organisms, living organisms, into groups according to their similarities. So imagine yourself in a lab and uh, maybe you're in the chemistry lab and you want to put these things together in group them. Maybe you'll find flasks and put them in a certain place and even in those flasks, you remember the names of the flasks? Conical flask, round bottomed flasks, flat bottomed flask, which are the flasks? All of them. So you say, hmm, let me put the plastic flasks alone. Let me put the, uh, the glass ones by themselves also. Okay. So organisms are put in groups depending on the things they have in common. So I assume I go to a forest or hmm, maybe to a new planet and I start to want to put these things in order. I'm going to find what is similar to all of them and then put those that are similar in the same group. Now, it involves observing organisms, seeing their structures and then uh, grouping them into groups which we refer to as taxa. It's in singular, it's called a taxon. So, the groups we are talking about, we have called them taxa. Or a single, a single group, we call it a taxon. Now, the branch of biology that concerns itself with classifying organisms is the one referred to as taxonomy. So now I guess you know where that word from previous topic comes from, taxonomy. Okay. Now, taxonomy is the science that deals with identifying, naming, and classifying organisms. It deals with So now, let us go to the levels of classification. 
We are going to be handling each of these, but for now, let's look at classifying. of classification are also the ones we have called groups and also the ones we have called taxa. Now, uh, the level, uh, each, each group, each level has organisms that have something similar to them. Now, the biggest of them is only called kingdom and the smallest of them is only called species. So we're going to write them down in order of their decreasing size so the first one is what we call a kingdom the next one is one we call a phylum the next one is one we call a class then we have what we call the order then followed by family then followed by genus and lastly what we call the species important for you to do is know them in that order Okay. So, the plural for phylum is phyla. Okay. The plural for genus is genera. So, the, 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 what the, the groups are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So, you can find a mnemonic around it just so that you can be able to remember. Something like King Pharaoh could order for good species. Remember that one of King Henry's daughter Mary? So this is King Pharaoh could order for good species, which is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, gen genus, or genera, species. All right. Now, all organisms, you and I inclusive, have to belong to a certain kingdom. Now, uh, it's just the way I could uh, classify myself and say that me, I come from my father's family, whose name is Z. Okay, my family is part of a clan. Which clan is called Blackboard? So, Z family, Blackboard clan, tribe. Of the tribe, Maka. Okay, mention any tribe you know. Okay, so, of the tribe, Maka. And we come from the country called the US. Okay, or any country that I like. So, very, my family is small, but very many families form my clan. And more of those clans form my tribe. And more of those tribes form our nation, okay, which is part of very many nations that form the globe. So it's the same thing that we're going to do here. Now, let's talk about the kingdom. Now, the kingdom is the largest group of all the seven we have given, okay? All organisms that are called living organisms on earth fall in one of the five kingdoms which you looked at some time back in primary. So, kingdoms have the largest numbers of organisms. So, we have kingdoms like Animalia, Kingdom, Fungi, Kingdom, Monera, which constitutes of the bacteria, Kingdom, any other that you remember, Plantae, 
and lastly, no protoptisa. So these are the five kingdoms. Animalia, fungi, monera, plantae, protoptista. Take note that they, we, we are using a certain twist of the names. We have not given kingdom animals. I am not saying kingdom plants, but we are saying kingdom animalia because as you know, biology borrows most of its words from the Greek and the Latin. So we write them in this form. Let us take note of this. That viruses, if you know any, do not belong in any of these kingdoms. Why? Because they are on the borderline between living and non-living. Viruses can exist as non-living organisms, non-living things, um, where they are in form of crystals. Okay, crystals in the atmosphere. However, when they land on a cell that can support their growth. They enter into that cell all the way into its nucleus. Take on that nucleus and cause it to form copies, many copies of the virus. So viruses, you remember Mrs. Green? Viruses do not move. They do not grow. They do not respire. They do not excrete. Uh, they are not sensitive. Okay but they reproduce so that's why i mean they don't have all the five but they have the six so we cannot say they are non-living things because they reproduce but we cannot say they are living things because they are not souls they do not have the cellular structure and they do not carry out all the other life processes so we just talk about them as viruses we do not talk about them as plants or animals we call them viruses let's interest ourselves into the last one which we called the species if we were to compare the species with my classification as a human as i said eh, the species would be my family family z okay that is from the clan did i say white board or black board yeah of the tribal marker now species um the smallest group made up of individuals that have almost the same characteristic features and can interbreed freely to produce fertile offspring okay so species have individuals So, species are organisms, okay, it's a group of organisms which can freely interbreed with each other and produce offsprings that live, that are viable, but also that are fertile, meaning they can, the, if the offsprings can interbreed to produce more offsprings. The other five groups, we are going to see them as we go.